you're looking for some ways to control blood sugar, whether it's pre-diabetes or insulin dependence or diabetes type 2, then this is the presentation for you. Not only going to share with you what I've seen working with patients for 22 years, we've also got a wonderful blood sugar report called How to Beat Blood Sugar Cravings and How to Manage or What to Do with this substance that's literally as addictive as anything in nature. Like we're talking about recreational drug therapy, we're talking about caffeine, we're talking about nicotine. Well, sugar is literally stronger than all of them. So I'm your host for the quick program on blood sugar management, diabetes, prediabetes, and everything else. And so let's jump right into this topic and talk about what we can do to help to beat the cravings, and I've got some really good tips and stuff for you guys to, to, to get a better handle on this because sugar, it's the life giver and the life taker. Like if we talk about uh, life giver, naturally occurring in fruits and vegetables, it's energy for the brain, the organs, and tissues. I mean, the brain has to have it, and if you have healthy sugar levels, then you have healthy life. Let's also talk about the taker. Like if you get inadequate blood sugar, which we call neuroglycopenia, when when the nerves don't get enough sugar, they fail. But also if you get too much diabetes, it increases your cancer risk factor. It, It hammers your blood pressure. It's hard on your kidneys and liver, your eye health, and your nerve health. And they were literally, this is what I think, the only way that you can beat blood sugar cravings is to understand what it's doing and to beat it. So let's talk about, the, again, too much blood sugar. We're going to be talking about dementia increase, increase in inflammation, which is going to lead to cardiovascular disease, increase in weight gain, and, and too much stored energy. And the average person consumes about 17 teaspoons or 71 grams a day. One gram is four calories. Four calories turns into 270 stored calories. We have these empty calories that literally have no nutrient value. So when I talk about no nutrient value, what I mean by that is what happens so many times with people that they're hungry and they run and they get empty calories. So this is fast food. This is this is candy bars. This is, and I dare I say it, this is the granola bar world because there's so much junk in what used to be a healthy food and so what the average person has to do we need to be 150 calories no more than 38 grams which is nine teaspoons so doing the quick math we want to have half of blood sugar that normal people are getting and so we talk about where is it coming from the added sugar so we have refined white sugar we have brown sugar we have raw sugar inverted sugar, malt sugar, coconut sugar, like it's really just sugar in a different name. You know, molasses, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, corn sweetener, fruit juice concentrate, and literally just about anything that ends in OSE, such as fructose, glucose, dextrose, lactose, maltose, and sucrose. So there's where it's coming from. And if we can adopt a lifestyle of reducing the sugars, it helps with stress, It helps with your emotional well-being, avoid sedentary lifestyles in corporates, high intensive interval training and physicians approved programs. Like these are all the things that we can do that will help with blood sugar. And I'm going to give you some really neat tips here in just a minute. If we can monitor your blood sugar, like if you know what it is, if you can stay hydrated, and this is one of those things where water is so underrated, like no one's talking about how important it is. It's kind of like the Tin Man on the Wizard of Oz. If he has, he has enough oil, then he, has, he doesn't squeak as much. If we have enough water, then everything's better. Arthritis is better. Headaches are better. Uh, digestion is better. Like there's so many incredible benefits of, of water. And if anybody's out there thinking, well, I just don't like water, well, that, what I'm trying to tell people is it's a condition habit. And if you can at least get to where you don't resent or don't like water. It's such an important part in managing blood sugar. And, and what I tell people is, look, especially if you are trying to get rid of toxins, if you're, if you're wanting to have a healthier liver function, if you want to reduce heart factors, you need more water. And 
if you help combine that with relaxation and priority, getting your head into the right spot. And that means doing something that you like consistency, whether it's walking or prayer or meditation or my favorite thing to tell people to manage stress, which is going to naturally reduce your blood sugar load, is journaling. I think that's so important to connect the right side and the left side uh, of the body. But literally, it's whatever is your stress reliever. Now, a little bit more than that, I do really like to ride dirt bikes. I like to fish. I like to organize projects. And I'm not saying that that works for you, but you need to find something. Get it on your schedule and treat it just like an appointment. And you can't have people infringe on that time. Now, giving you guys some life recommendations here. So these are the, some of the things that I really just some really good guidelines. One of my favorite things to do for blood sugar management, like if you know all of the things that, that an excess sugar does to your health, this is like the first step or the first tool that can help you beat blood sugar cravings, reduce your blood sugar. And then I'm going to give you some specific integrative things of some advanced treatments. But thinking about stuff like this, like refinishing your blood sugar by eating a healthy protein breakfast. I like this. Now, there's, there's definitely a place for intermittent fasting and some other things like that. But usually what I find is when people miss breakfast in the morning, what occurs is they, they don't have enough energy or vitality or stuff coming in the, the morning. And then they have this like ravenous hunger attack at noon or 2 o'clock. And they go for quick things. They go for some juice or they go for a bagel or they go for yogurt. So that's for people that are thinking they're healthy. But there's some really bad hidden sugars in there. But there's also people say, you know, I just need a Diet Coke. I just need uh, a smoothie. I just need uh, a quick hamburger. I need something fast. And then what happens is all that stuff comes into their system. The pancreas kicks in. Their blood sugar spikes. And then what happens is the, the insulin drops the blood sugar levels, and it's like throwing gasoline on the fire. It's, it's the exact opposite of what happens. So if you're struggling with blood sugar regulation or type 2 diabetes, if we can eat consistently on little intervals, you know, two to four hours and doing things that are healthy, like possibly a whey consideration, an anti-inflammatory diet with omega fats, olive oil, raw nuts, wild caught salmon, even dark chocolate. I, I, I kind of like dark chocolate as a recommendation for people because it has such high levels of magnesium and then watching your high glycemic index food. So those are things like breads and sandwiches, and then targeting a low glycemic index of beans, of chickpeas. Uh, we can supplement that with some essential fatty acids like ground flax or chia seeds. And what it does is it just really helps to give your body, it's like if your body's a fire, this is like putting some coal on the fire. Now, the other recommendations, having several servings of colorful organic vegetables. So when you sit down to eat, you should have a rainbow of colors on your plate. Some green, some yellow, some red, some white. And I jokingly tell people, look, Skittles, Starburst, M&Ms don't count. It has to be plant-based material. But in a serious note, you know, spinach, purple cabbage, kale, asparagus, uh, broccoli, broccoli sprouts, and then adding some healthy fruits, berries, plums, apples, peaches, those, what they do, again, stabilizing blood sugar so we don't have the great big roller coaster of highs and lows. And then your snacks, recommendation of raw nuts, not roasted, salted, barbecued, or chocolate nuts, avocados. And then there's a company they work with called Designs for Health. They have some really healthy food bars. And if we mitigate that or, or even that out through the day into smaller, consistent meals. Now, this is really hard for entrepreneurs and type A personalities. They're the type of people that want to do a 10-minute walk in seven minutes. We have to slow your roll here down just a little bit. And remember that the most important thing in your life is your health. If you have your health, you can work more, you can create more, you can get your tasks and your goals and your deadlines. You can start another company. You can, but if you don't, and, and blood sugar is such a detrimental risk factor for 
um, athletic performance, mental performance, arthritis, cancer modification factors, and it's such a damaging thing when I see people that are rolling in with late stage diabetes that have neuropathy problems or amputations or they're struggling with their eyes. And if it's something that we can do right now to help, if just eating consistently, eating healthy consistently, and by the way, I haven't even talked about sleep. I think sleep is something that no one really in the space is talking about. Did you know that if you are getting four to five hours of sleep, a night, your risk for diabetes literally goes up somewhere between 50 and 60 percent. And in people that are struggling with sleep, we have in our YouTube channel, our Facebook channel, we even have a pre report on secrets of good night sleeps to create a sleeping sanctuary so that your body can recharge at night. I think this is absolutely a, a must have step and seeing what we can do to get you to healthy sleep. Like a lot of times people will go to sleep and then they wake up and they're not refreshed because they didn't get into rapid eye movement sleep and they're not rejuvenating. So they're kind of halfway asleep. They're not completely asleep. So eating healthy, eating consistently, uh, colorful foods on your plate are all significant um, things that can really, really help your blood sugar levels. The other thing that I really like herbs and spices, anti-inflammatory things like rosemary. Ginger is one of my favorite things, not only to eat personally, but to recommend for people. We want to avoid things that spike, like high sugar snacks, you know, sodas, processed fruit juices. Like, I think this is one of the, the biggest um, sneaky things that happens to people's health is they're trying to be healthy, and then they go into the, hey, I want to reach something. I want to get something healthy and fast, so they grab an apple juice, they grab a smoothie, they grab a cranberry juice, and it's just full of refined carbohydrates and possibly high fructose corn syrup. And then we want to also just be careful with vegetables. So there's some vegetables that really help, which basically is full of fiber. And then there's some vegetables that you have to be uh, careful with. You know, granola, um, certain types of pastas. I know that's not a vegetable, but, but it's a really uh, prevalent in our diet. Also, you got to be careful with potatoes. Now, potatoes are, are prepared the right way. I th actually think they're really healthy for you. They have high doses of vitamin C in it. Potatoes pr prepared the wrong way. Chips, French fries, tater tots, I think are really, really unhealthy. And then looking at what you can do from a lifestyle standpoint. Reducing liquid sugar. Like this is the biggest chink in people's armor that's number one. And then looking for ways that we can swap healthy sugars for additives. So things are things like mint leaves, cucumber, homemade sauces, apple sauces, bananas, uh, fruit with fiber. Um, and, and then one of the things that I really, really like is, is getting healthy spices. The cinnamon, cilantro, ginger, I think those are so good for your health. So if you are considering or wanting to do something natural, one of the protocols that we've been using inside of our office for years, and you can get these products across the internet. You can get them at the health food store. And when I say products, like you can get these, I, I should say ingredients that are really, really good for blood sugar levels is, I'm just going to walk you through the protocol. Now, if you need help with it, it's going to be inside of the link. If you have access to this, great. I the purpose of the presentation is to tell people about blood sugar, about how to regulate blood sugar, and then what we can do about it. So what I like to use in my office, I like something called blood sugar all-in-one. I like an herbal product, a glucose supreme, and that has things in it like Jemima. It has a ginger. It has curcumin. And what it does is it helps to make it so that blood sugar is not so tasty um, it, it literally helps to change your taste buds. And again, on a healthy diet, what's happening is you will see some changes inside of your, your taste receptors if we commit to, I just want to eat healthier. Now, Rome wasn't conquered in one day, so when I start telling people, look, I want you to, to avoid these, these really, really addictive sugars because of all the risk factors and if we take an approach that we can beat it over time, then you have a really great opportunity to beat it. Now, inside of 
the office, there are some other considerations that functional medicine and certainly what we do inside of our office can provide for people. So what I like to do is to make sure that we tailor a medical nutritional therapy recommendation based upon your health. And so I like to do a blood test, a complete blood cell count, a metabolic panel, a thyroid panel with a T4, T3, TSH, also looking at your total iron levels, your magnesium, and your uric acid, and, of course, a vitamin D level. Now, why that's so important, if you do it in a really nice profile, I see this so many times in people that they'll have a low calcium score, which calcium in the wrong place is bad. You get you know cataracts and bursitis, and you can get cardiovascular disease. But also, if we don't have enough calcium and we have low calcium, what happens is we get you know muscle aches and pains, our Im- immune system doesn't work very, right, very well, and we're going to have weak bones, which seeing some osteoporosis at late stages inside the office over 22 years, like that's not fun either. We want to make sure that calcium is in the right place. Another one that we see all the time that hardly anybody talks about is low alkaline phosphatase levels, which is a li- bone liver enzyme that's so important for uh, um, your pituitary and your energy levels like i literally think that this is the energy enzyme of the body having a low blood urea nitrogen is is related to low hormone output and low hdl low cholesterol levels now cholesterol too high is bad cholesterol too low is bad so we want to make sure that that is balanced so if when these are just some examples but when you when you have someone's blood test and you can really dial in you can do some amazing things for tailoring a specific protocol for people inside of the office. And then we have the opportunity for those that are interested. We can actually have the ability to go inside of a company and we can literally custom formulate exactly what they need into one bottle or we can take off-the-shelf supplements for calcium and for hormone production and for blood sugar management and for putting ginger and I think For diabetes, pre-diabetes, insulin resistance is it's so important to have some protomorphogen therapy, which is a glandular pancreatic extract. Um, I see this really help to regulate blood sugar and then making sure that you have your vitamins and minerals inside of the program. What it does is it really helps people to regulate their blood sugar levels. So, With that being said, you can custom formulate. You can put everything inside of a formulation. You can help people to get multiple different single products to put things together. And then uh, I'll doing some other considerations. I love doing energy medicine. This is things like acupuncture or neural therapy. Neural therapy is that German reset medicine. You can use a light therapy, and there's a diathermy system where you can literally get some energy into the pancreas, at least in my clinical experience, and then using an advanced therapy that I learned in Mexico, healthy cell therapy, where you can literally are taking stem cell fragments, not necessarily stem cells, but things that really help the body to jumpstart that process. Um, The old therapy or the old recommendations or name for it was autosanguination therapy is using little bits of your blood cells and mixing it with oxygen and then reintroduce it to the muscular system is something that I've, uh, my hat's off to one of my favorite healers, Dr. Calzada. I went to his office in Mexico, and he was showing me some of the things that they were doing for autoimmune and diabetes and arthritis, and that f- protocol seems to really help jumpstart people's system. I've seen them literally r- reduce their, their blood sugar levels, and their A1C using healthy cell therapy. And then I just love cleaning out the cardiovascular system and the pancreas by using some advanced IV nutritional therapy and a consideration is chelation therapy. I see a lot of improvement when we go through and we pull out the poisons and the heavy metals. And I think that there's a lot of times it goes and it it literally settles in the pancreas and causes pancreatic dysfunction and I see some really nice improvement doing some detox. And my favorite way to detox is to do the chelation therapy. All right, so for the next steps inside a blood sugar program, I would do this. The most important thing is to work on your mind health, having a healthy stress outlet. 
prayer, meditation, deep breathing, journaling. I drink water before meals. It's one of my favorite things to tell people, look, if you're struggling with sugar, one of my favorite things before you reach for the snack, drink some water, measure all the food intake. Like especially people have the tendency to underestimate how much sugar is going into their system by a factor the research shows of about 300%. And so if you're measuring, if you're really paying attention to either a food journal or even literally a scale, and then having a food journal, you can beat this blood sugar epidemic that we have. A medical nutritional therapy, blood sugar stability. I have a herbal product that I call Craving Killer. I've seen really good outcomes. So important to have some type of glandular therapy supporting your pancreas. Now, if you've enjoyed the presentation and you'd like some inf more information, we have a special report called Blood Sugar Report, How to Beat Cravings. Um, almost instantaneously, it's about six, uh, about seven or eight pages, just to give you some excellent input. If you have access to things like uh, ginger, alpha lipoic acid, glandular support therapy for the pancreas, make sure that you have a good multi-mineral, multivitamin, essential fatty acid. This really helps to regulate cravings. If you need help with that, we have a program located in the comments. If you don't need help with it, those are kind of the parameters that I would give. If you would like our free report, just see it down in the content of description of this video. And also, a, a big shout out to getting everyone active and do movements. So what does that mean? You don't have to go out and run a marathon or do a Ironman competition, but it's so important to move and be active. I'm Dr. Jason West with our pro idea suggestions about blood sugar management. Just a real quick high level view. If you like this, please give us a share or a comment and I'll see you guys on the next video.